Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd. And uh, let's do one more request today. Well, this morning. I'll do another one. I'll do a couple more this afternoon once I'm done with work. But one more, just for the palette. We've just done two amazing videos. One with Unleash the Archers. Another one with a band with a similar style to Unleash the Archers who threw Britney over the top of it because they said, hey, we're going to do double Rob Halford in this power metal bitch. <laughs> and they did. So let's go into one of, uh, let's go to classic Arch Enemy. Why? Because Arch Enemy is one of those bands that leads into Unleash the Archers. Without Arch Enemy, do you have Unleash the Archers? I don't know. Arch Enemy is, <laughs> in the terms of this epic metal genre, they're really one of the first ones that really showcased that female lead singer in, in this type of metal, in that power metal vibe. Now, they're a little bit different. If you're thinking that you're just going to go to this, like with a Nightwish, where it's operatic, classic Katrine vocalists in all three renditions of their lead sing female singers, or Lacuna Coil, where it's a combination of both, Arch Enemy's a little bit more, we're going to get into the pit and brawl with you, which is necessary to make it awesome. So let's check out, this was recommended uh, by um, Andre. Andre says, oh, by the way, his name actually is Death. Andre Death recommends Arch Enemy, Nemesis Live in Japan. Time for you to react to Angela on vocals, don't you think? Angela Gasco? Absolutely. Uh, she was the original singer, I believe, and she left the band to be with her family and other interests and actually kind of helped pick or handed the torch off to the current lead singer of Arch Enemy that everyone knows now. Um, but she started it. And she is that iconic uh, figure that um, is she the is she the Ozzy before the Dio in Black Sabbath of Arch Enemy? I don't know. I don't know that much about it, but we're about to find out. This is Arch Enemy. The song is called Nemesis. It is live in Tokyo. My name is Old School Nerd. Please like and subscribe. Check this out. Any of the information that I've just told you that is incorrect, please correct me in the comments. Remember, I'm an idiot. I don't know anything. I've never seen this before. So here we go. Um, check us out on oldschoolnerd.com. It's got our social media posts, the Patreon, and of course, the merchandise store. Here we go. Uh. One uh -oh. for all. And for all. For one. We Okay, obviously you know that I start, when something shocks the crap out of me, I'll stop the video in the first 10 seconds. I made it 28 seconds. That's pretty good for me. Two things, number one, this band, Arch Enemy, is, a, is an inspiration to a lot of the music that we're all loving right now. Without Arch Enemy and bands like Arch Enemy, Nightwish, and a lot of these female-fronted power metal take over the world stuff, you don't have Baby Metal, you don't have Band Made, you don't have Nemo Fella, you don't have um, Picket, The Warning, um, Arch, uh, uh, Unleash the Archers, all these bands that we love where women are just out there like, hey, of course it's a woman in front. That wasn't the case when I was a kid. When I was a kid, we had Lita Ford, that was it. And she was kind of a novelty. Like everyone was like, oh my God. And everyone was freaking out, not because she was an amazing guitarist and a vocalist, but because she was a woman. That was the big thing. Whereas now, there are women lead metal, there are women leading metal bands. And in some cases, the entire band is, is women. Um, and it's so commonplace now. I'm like, cool. Because, you know, you guys know I'm a dad three daughters so it's really awesome for me to be able to look at my daughters and say hey guys the way the world that i grew up in is not the world that you've grown up in yes we have coronavirus yes we have terrorism yes we have stupid po politicians running amok and we have social media destroying everything but you know what we do have we have 
as far as metal bands, for sure, metal bands, metal is now completely genderless. It doesn't matter who you are. Man, woman, non-binary, you can destroy the world and take it over if you want to. That's why I'm so excited about being in metal now. And by the way, she was one of the ones who led the charge all the way back at the turn of the millennium. Even then, female metal singers, leaders of bands was still uncommon back then. So it was still a novelty back then. Isn't it awesome that it's now as commonplace as anything else? I think it's pretty freaking awesome. I forgot my second point. I said, number one, two things. Number one, that. Number two, she has a black eye and the other eye is swollen almost shut. What the hell happened? Just asking. And before somebody says, oh, that's makeup. Makeup doesn't do swelling like that. I'm going to say the last show they did, she got into the mosh pit. And you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> they carried that guy out. She's like, this is it. That's all he did. so good um is it weird that i like old arch enemy more than i like the new arch enemy is that weird i find that the some of the stuff i've seen from the new arch enemy is more epic in storytelling which is good don't get me wrong i love that stuff have you seen my channel it's filled with nightwish amareth sabaton unleash the archers <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a thing for me but there's just something about this classic arch enemy where not only does she look like she just got out of the mosh pit, but we're pretty sure that at any moment she's going back in and she's kicking at least 15 people's asses. Again, I'm going to keep saying this in this video because it really hits me right here. I love and I'm so thankful for Arch Enemy and bands like this that now when this was going on, when Arch Enemy first started, they were such a novelty and they were everyone was talking about them because of the lead singer and how she was a growler normally that was only guys that were doing all that and, da, 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 da. and now it's so commonplace it's not even important anymore it doesn't matter because anyone can do it <laughs> she's so badass though <laughs> There's a list of people that I want my, my children to emulate, you know, okay. I want you to be smart like this woman. I want you to be strong like this woman. And I want my daughters, whenever someone picks on them or bullies them or gives them shit or tells them they can't, I want them to look at her and go, <laughs> really? All right. <laughs> there you go. I'm red, woman, Yeah.
Metal 101, okay? Everyone get ready. Metal 101 with old school. Okay, here's the thing. You talk to any metal artist. You could literally tweet Britney Slays right now and ask her, hey, is old school right about the following point? And she's going to go, mm, yeah, kind of. No matter what style of music you play, whether it's death metal, heavy metal, new metal, storytelling, operatic, symphony style metal, it doesn't matter. You can be as fast, elaborate as you want to be. Okay, and you could be as intricate and unfollowable. You could literally play 2112 from Rush. It doesn't matter. Okay, but at some point, you have to write a song or have some part of your performance that allows even someone who is not musical, for instance, let's use Unleash the Archers as a prime example. Unleash the Archers, if they want to, can literally go through and play expert musicianship upper level guitar playing drumming bass lines elaborate time signature changes transition seamless layered storytelling super fast super complex da -da 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 -da. but you have to know that at some point in every performance somewhere in your career at some point usually you want to do it in your first album and especially if you can do it in your sophomore album it's even better because it, it means you can last um, you have to have a song that at some point allows you to let, has a part in it that is so basic. Usually it's a chant, it's a chorus, it's a breakdown of something that is not musically complex, something that is so simple that even the drunk guy 300 feet away in the back of the amphitheater or at the, in the back of the music festival knows can chant along raise his hands clap over if you can get the overhead clap going with that the devil horns the the, the chant to something simple that's where you take the audience and pull them in and make them part of your band that's what a lot of people want we love the musicianship we love the heavy we love the theatrics we love the amazing vocals we love all of that but when you come to a live performance, if you have something in your show, at least one song, at least one breakdown, at least something that in some part of your performance allows the audience to become one with you, that's Metal 101. You have to have a moment where everyone can get into it. People wanna know, hey, why is Metallica so big? Is it because they're pushed by radio? Is it because of the Black Album going commercial? Da 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 da. Wrong. You want to know why they're big? Because even when Cliff Burton was still alive, before the Black Album, it came out with a song called Master of Puppets that allowed the entire audience to sing Master, Master, singing it as James Hetfield is singing the, the bridge. That's what started it. To this day, Master of Puppets is still considered by most Metallica fans to be their favorite Metallica because it was before they went commercial, before they were on the radio, and it, was, it would allow them to be part of Metallica's performance. Arch Enemy's doing it right here with Nemesis. Try to find those songs that do that. Go to an Unleash the Archers concert. And go watch Northwest Passage. Watch the people sing it with her. There are certain songs of every band that everyone can just get into. Nightwish does it too. Definitely Sabaton. Sabaton's writing about your hometown overcoming an evil invader everywhere they go. I mean, come on. So that's Metal 101 with Old School. The way you become huge as a metal band, yes, it's important. I mean, there's, there's, there's millions, there's been millions of metal bands in just Finland alone. <laughs> Sorry. There's, there's hundreds of metal bands out there and they're just trying to make it. They're just trying to just, they're just trying to make it. If you're trying to make it and you're struggling, I'm going to give you an example and it's not even a metal band. There's a band called Welshley Arms. They're from Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee or Nashville, Tennessee. Okay, they're a blues rock band, kind of unknown. A lot of people don't know who they are. But all they did was write one song. 
one song that had an iconic, simple drop into it. And now that song has been played in every Super Bowl, every All-Star game, every major sporting event, the Olympics, you name it. It's called Legendary because that's what the song is about. It's been played at WrestleMania. I mean, come on. It just takes one perfect song with something that is iconic that everyone can feel, even if they're not a musician. You can do that. That's all it takes. And this is it right here. Soccer chant. That's awesome, man. That is so damn cool. Now also, okay, another example of this, just so everyone can feel it. I, I just wanna I just wanna share this. Um, go back and look at a video that I did um, of Megadeth, Symphony of Destruction, live in Argentina. If you want to know about a song that connects, Megadeth has a lot of big songs in their career, but nothing that really made them as big as Metallica. They never caught up to that because they never really had a song that transition like Master of Puppets and things like that where everyone could really get into. So there was a lot of people that thought that Megadeth and, and Metallica were fighting against each other because of the breakup and all that other stuff. And some of that is true. There was a lot of animosity between them. However, when Symphony of Destruction came out, I remember that that hook, that, that hook little guitar riff was iconic for them. Go watch the video and watch how that song connects to that audience in Argentina. There's something about South American audiences. Uh, Rush in Sao Paulo, right, is a good example of that. So all these iconic bands that, that hold the test of time all have something, a song, something that allows them to connect to an audience on a personal level. To this day, if you go to a um, Coheed and Cambria show, okay, if you go to see a Coheed and Cambria, Claudio and the boys are playing elaborate, layered, complex stuff. You can't even follow the lyrics. It's like going to an early Rush show. But when they play Homecoming and you hit that, that riff, na -na 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 I mean, the crowd, it's just something that's iconic that they can relate to whether it be a vocal chant, like here with Arch Enemy, something as simple as a hook in a song, that's Metal 101. If you want to stop being nameless, have something that relates and people can connect to, even on the most non-musical level. A lot of bands out there are still struggling to find that breakout moment because they are musically up here and your average person is musically here. They don't connect. At some point, you have to come down and bring it. You can't do, nowadays you can't do like Rush did. Rush stayed up here, and then eventually they kept doing it, and they educated their audience to come up to them. And then when they did music, moving pictures with Tom Sawyer and stuff, they just, <laughs> they brought their people up with them. But that took 30 years. Bands can't take 30 years to do that anymore. It's just, it's a different world. Anyway, that was Metal 101, 102, and an elective, bi, uh, ele elective lab course. Uh, you get four credit points towards your metal degree. Um, this is Professor Old School, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Oh, um, please pick up your tests. Uh, the grades are out in the hall. Um, I need to see Miss um, Miss Broussard, Miss Dimbo, and Mr. Angel, please, um, your assignments need to be checked. And if you're still listening to this, your attention, possibly suspension.